Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another URD Care video interview, the first for 2021. And today I'm really pleased to be focusing on technology, which is really these days moving extremely fast. So it's a very interesting subject. And uh, joining me, I have Scott Sangster, who is VP Sales for Descartes, and Wes Tucker, who is COO for the Western Hemisphere for ACL Airshop. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for, for joining me. What do you think we'll be looking at, say, 12 months or 24 months from, from now in terms of, of, of advancement of this technology? What do, you, what do you see coming over the horizon? You know, Bob, I think one of the things that I've always heard you speak about at the various events that we've attended is, is adoption of innovation, right? As, as the airlines and as the airlines are, are more accepting of the technology uh, and adopting the technology, that is the way that we move forward. One of the things that that is uh, that, that is the end game for us, and uh, we like to call it the Uberization of the ULD world. <laughs> and we we have a we have an application that's called Find My ULD, and it is connected to not only our ULD control software, uh, but also to our our system where we also track leased pallets with our existing customers. It provides a, a forward-facing atmosphere, really, for for the customers who have existing units on lease. It provides uh, an atmosphere where uh, ground handlers can scan a unit or type in the actual uh, ULD number, and it will provide them with the actual customer who is leasing the equipment. And you know, combine that with Bluetooth because it also uh, provides a, a a Bluetooth environment where all units that are being read by uh, by the Descartes network are obviously API'd to our system and then provides a real-time vision uh, or atmosphere for the customers. The three-year plan, the, the forward-facing, even maybe 36 months, Bob, but we're working on this now, which will provide a customer the time that they would actually need a ULD, find themselves short of a ULD, they will be able to open up the application, just like you were at the airport looking for a car uh, for a ride from the airport with Uber, and you would immediately see how many ULDs are available at your particular airport. You would been, then be able to select the type of ULD. You would be able to select the quantity, and at that point, it would generate a lease order and a confirmation uh, for, for the customer and for ACL Air Shop. Um, and the Bluetooth piece to me is very exciting here because not only are we able to use this application, but we do have some background opportunities with, with not only with Descartes, but with some, some other advancements that we're making to convert your mobile device into a reader itself. So effectively, you can receive the equipment with your mobile device and that is a dig digital signature that you have received the equipment and the lease then generates. And it's not just about leasing because it also provides you as the customer or uh, as the airline, where is that particular pallet at any given time as long as it's in the reader network. So it's, uh, it's, there are almost limitless possibilities, not only with the app, obviously we're excited about that, um, but using the data that is provided by this network to give many more forward-facing op opportunities to end users, even to customers, um, that, you know, where, we've said this before, I think four years ago when we first started talking with, uh, with Core, and it's, where's my stuff? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that at the end of the day, this technology will allow the airlines that maybe not are not integrators to play in that space in a growing e-commerce market. Where's my stuff? You can use this particular application and the background technology associated with it to provide that to the end user. So, you know, it may not be 12 months, it may not be 24, it may, uh, but this is a this is a growing. Uh, it's it's almost a snowball effect, I believe, Bob, and I and I think we're we're getting there. Yeah, well, uh, and, and if I can just jump in, because another 
side, which is for the cargo terminals. Because yep. one of the issues that cargo terminals have told me is they say, yeah, we get all these JG or FF or um, uh, what are the other common numbers, yeah. but and we have no idea who they are. And they all end up sitting in a big pile in the corner. And frankly, when we're short of pallets, uh, we just we just help ourselves to a few. Uh, if the cargo terminal operators are going to be able to also identify, as you mentioned just now, who that uh, who that pallet or who that container is actually working for uh, at that time, because somebody's paying for it in terms yep. of rental and so on, uh, that will enable the, uh, the the cargo terminal to to designate that that unit properly and and uh, allocate it to that customer. So uh, that's another huge huge benefit to a, a big problem. Turning to you, Scott, what what do you what do you think we're going to see in the next uh, 12, 24, 36 months? If I take a step back for a moment, and and the side of the business that I came from in in Descartes is around the air cargo messaging side of the business, and. We, we wanted to become the, the world's largest network for exchanging of information between forwarders and carriers, and that led to the expansion to the other participants in the supply chain. Um, and, and I look at this the same way and say the key is the expansion of this network, and then the value of the data goes not only, to your point, Bob, uh, from just the airlines, but to the ground handlers, to the airport authorities, to any of the uh, participants of the supply chain that may need to see where the physical equipment is at. So a lot of our focus has still been around some of the themes I talked about before with expanding the network. Um, and to your comment earlier, Bob, about you know these pallets may end up lying who knows where in a portion of the field. Um, we've started to look at and, and deployed things like uh, solar powered uh, readers to be able to cover areas where there isn't uh, traditional uh, power capacity within the environment. And that in conjunction with a mesh relay network which um, in, in simple terms allows uh, each of these mesh relays and readers to be able to exchange mesh and messages within each other and exchange the data to find an available reader that is connected to the cloud. Uh, as I think we're all familiar around airports, it's not always the best, let's say, cellular coverage in a particular area. And we'll see readers that will go you know, offline from losing a cellular connection with the mesh relay um, we now can hop that data to another active reader that's connected to the cloud and it will upload that data. So there's no uh, latency in the data that's coming up and there's no loss of data as it goes across the network. So things like that, number one, help the resiliency, but also the expansion of the network. Um, and then to, to Wes's comment about the mobile applications with a couple of customers today, we've deployed uh, a mobile application to allow somebody to be able to update or interrogate data from a tag at any point in time. So it can give you that proof of delivery that, that Wes is talking about, but it can also start to get into the capturing of other data relevant to the shipment. So we've spent a lot of time talking about gen, or developing Gen 2 tags on in our environment, which not only capture the physical location of the goods, but starts to give you conditions of the goods. So um, the, the temperature of the goods, humidity, uh, light within a container can tell you when a container has been opened or not, uh, was as well as an accelerometer to see if there's been any instance of jarring. Um, if you imagine if somebody you know, dropped a container on its side, uh, you'd be able to immediately know the physical location at which that took place by the data capture and know who the party was that was responsible for the goods at that point in time when it was damaged uh, would help settle some of those disputes in the future. Um, that along with things like micro tags that we're working on to do shipment level tracking. So get beyond just the equipment, but start to look at the individual pieces within the uh, within that shipment uh, is become very critical and those can be reusable tags. So if you're monitoring a, a high value shipment, um, that can be used to monitor the shipment all the way to final delivery, get your electronic proof of delivery, and then recycle that tag for another, another shipment. So many things around that technology but I think one of the other things is, is once we have that data capture, there's a lot of other things that we can do with that data. So the application of ULD location into uh, a partner's back office where they can start to say, I can now update information on the uh, physical location, but also the condition of the goods to a master airway bill or a house airway bill starts to give more uh, complete end-to-end -end visibility to customers. 
Um, and so, and, and obviously to the, let's say the air carriers customer or freight forwarders customer, it's not just about to, to Wes's comment about where's my stuff, but what's the condition of my stuff. Yeah. Um, and so being able to piece those together and working with some of our customers on some of the, you know, IATA initiatives uh, and being able to integrate that into some of those projects is, is really what we'll probably see a lot of over the next uh, 12 months is there's lots of value to the data. There's multiple people who can use it, and it's at the tipping point to break away from just a uh, ULD management function as well. So that's where we see it starting to really expand out as well.